and they're off in the Coral Dragon Stakes. Fast away towards the far side rail is Eddie's boy. The one who's pressing the pace early is Rocket Rodney. Then there's a break of a length and a half to back heel as they race on through the first furlong and a half. Against the far rail is Rum Star, out wide Cuban Mistress, and just the back marker is Remarkable Force as they're about to go inside the final three furlongs of the Coral Dragon Stakes. And still the lead is held by Eddie's boy. A neck away is Rocket Rodney, but they're very tightly grouped. Bakil is driven towards the outside. Rumstar looking for a little bit of racing room against that far rail, trying to pick up Remarkable Force and also Cuban Mistress towards the near side. They have a furlong to go, and it is Rocket Rodney who strikes and goes for home. He drifts in towards that far side rail, but he's opening up a big break over his toiling rivals. It's Rocket Rodney who wins the Coral Dragon Stakes. Cuban Mistress was up for second. Uh, first race here at Sandown, it's gone the way of Rocket Rodney, who's showed, showed a lot of pace, a lot of quality, much to the delight of trainer George Scott. Well done indeed. That must have given you a lot of satisfaction. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, he's a horse that's shown plenty at home from day one. And, you know, we went to Royal Ascot thinking that we had a chance of running a big race, but to go and bump into Aidan's horse is obviously frustrating. You know, he got beat by a better horse on the day, but I felt like it, Ascot made a man of him, you know. Um, Sometimes when they go through that uh, early maiden novice system, you know, when they're a nice horse, they don't learn much. But he came back from Ascot a different person, and uh, you know, it's reflected in his uh, in his um, run today. Did you come back sort of mixed emotions, therefore, from Ascot, knowing the reputation of the winner, of course, and seeing how well your horse had done up against him? Yeah, definitely. No, I was disappointed, you know. Yeah. But I think at Royal Ascot, you know, obviously winning's everything, but if you've got a young horse to look forward to, you can walk away um, excited as well. OK. And when you said that you still it seemed, well, that it made a man of him, Royal Ascot, did you, did you see that manifested on what he did on the track today? Well, I think so, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, um, I, thought, I think he's probably going to be a better horse with something to aim at. He's one of the most laid-back horses have ever trained honestly he'll walk onto the canter in the morning he'll walk to the furlong pole if you want him to and you know he doesn't do too much unless he's really asked so i think maybe a strong pace and something to shoot at late into like you know last furlong and a half will suit him better so he had to do a lot of the donkey work today but you know he finished off his race really well and you know he put he put the race to bed quickly so yeah it was a really pleasing performance the winner of this usually goes to, to goodwood more than likely for the molecom he's been to goodwood is it assuming he's fit and well is it is it almost inevitable yeah of course he'll go to the molecom you know provided you know as you say he's in, he's in good order um, he's already he's already shown a liking to the track. He nearly broke the track record there on his second start. So, yeah, we'll we'll look forward to Goodwood and, and then we'll make plans from there on. Um, and I remember speaking to you after Goodwood, where you said you you, you just had to go back to basics with your training methods and, and getting horses with his kind of profile. It, does that in itself just give you a lot of satisfaction? Using that word again, that you've you've stripped back a bit, but this is the fruits of the labour. Of course, you know we went and found this horse at the sales. Um, you know, off, on a small budget, we didn't actually end up buying him in the auction but you know we showed a lot of interest in, in, in him to the vendor and then it ended up that he sent him to me Stephen Corks who did a fantastic job pin hooking the horse and yeah look it, it has you know as I said I, I don't want to sort of whisper on like I did after Goodwood but it, you know it's been a it's been a pretty tough period of time professionally and also at home and you know I've I've been able to really reset over the winter and focus and you know that's our 19th winner I think we're striking at 20 percent this year so you know, it, it's, it's, yeah, I've got a great team. Alex, my assistant especially, kind of keeps the show on the road. And people like Sheikh Nasser coming in and showing belief, buying this horse for mm. me, keeping him in training with me. You know, he's first one on the phone there. You know, someone with his stature in, in, in the world, you know, who's trained on the phone and showing such enthusiasm. So, yeah, I'm loving it. Um, I love training. I love horses. And, you know, these days make it. You know, really worthwhile. Although, you know, I'm looking forward to Beverly tomorrow with a two year old, you know, so it's every day, it's building blocks, and, um, you know, it's particularly satisfying that today. He's, if you're as laid back as he is, um, but the, the things keep going on on the track, you'll be quite happy. Yeah. George, well done indeed. Thank, Thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much. Cheers.